All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will be demonstrating a helicopter. Seeing as everybody else seems to be doing helicopters, I'm going to do one of my own. So... Let's begin! So the um, the helicopter we have for you today is the Tetsi Fly. So helicopters are very difficult to make in Kerbal Space Program. Um, you might notice the rotors mesh. So think of that as being like a gear system. Um, if you look up uh, the Cayman K Max. Or the um, uh, there were some U.S. versions using this technique in the 70s. That's how it uh, works. Um, but yeah, it's basically like a gear works. When one blade comes around, the other isn't there, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, to, to make helicopters work nicely, you need A, weight, through the core. So that's why you so often see the um, things lifting through their center of gravity with the weapons through the center. Um, so that discharging them and stuff like that doesn't change anything in terms of weight. Uh, fuel tanks tend to be near the center as well. Um, cockpits, they tend to be off to one side because they don't really change in flight. You don't usually unload people out of the front. Uh, sometimes you do, but I mean, you're never too far in front of the main rotor assembly, so it never makes too big a difference. You can adjust for that yourself. I mean, you can adjust for that in flight if someone jumps out on the side of a hill or something. Um, and tail boom, in this case, we don't have a rotor, but again, that would be um, back there, doesn't change during flight, no problem. Now, thankfully, we only have to contend with weight through the center of gravity. Um, correct to a more reasonable angle. A bit much. There we go. That should do. Um, yeah. Thankfully, we we only have to worry about weight and drag. So the drag across the front and sides needs to be roughly equal when we're in forward flight, which it is in this model. Um, we are using electrical rotors, which is a bit unrealistic. I mean, the amount of power you can provide through an electrical rotor isn't great. Um, the main advantage of electrical motors over petrol and gasoline and jet turbine is that they work well over a range of speeds. They can put up pretty much the same amount of torque regardless of any other considerations, which is really nice. Um, in a helicopter though, you don't really vary the speed, so your rotor RPM stays pretty much the same the whole time, and you actually change the tilt of these rotor blades. So they basically, um, it's like when you pull up in a plane and the wings hit the air at a steeper angle, you pull up more. Um, that's called collective pitch. Collective just meaning, obviously all of the blades collectively get controlled by that, and that's a little um, lever on your left arm called the collective. For short, I guess it's collective pitch control. Everyone just calls it the collective. Um, yeah. Now, one thing we don't have to worry about, thankfully, is our fat ass here and our pointy nose here 
that would cause a mismatch of lift. So we would get more lift on the front and we would constantly be doing backflips. Which, awesome as it would be, is actually not what we want for actually flying in a straight line. It would be awesome though, let's be honest. Whoops, so we did that again. Can't remember where I stuck those there. They look cool though, right? <laughs> there was a reason. Perhaps I was merely concealing this so it looked like it had some mechanism, but there, there was some reason for that. Um, now we've pretty much got this right, I mean we've only got two um, SAS units here um, as well as the, obviously this is a cockpit so it's got a little bit, this is a drone core so it's got a little bit and some battery charge um, which notably is draining So we've got the APUs, um, they're somewhere in there, that's what all this um, is exhaust is from. So they're generating electricity but apparently not fast enough to compensate for how fast I'm using it. It's fine, I can slow down but I'm hoping that it will take care of itself. I have only tested this in flight, got that right, got it um, quick tested in uh, ground attacks and things. But uh, I haven't done a combat test yet, so... Actually, off axis, I want to stop the breaded galash. So, the breaded galash should be interesting because it is the successor to the shredded panache. It's a big thing, the breaded ganache. It, uh, I don't know if you remember, a few turns ago, uh, Twitchy launched some interesting assaults with that, uh, carrying turrets around to various places, struggling up hills, you know, the, the usual thing that uh, Twitchy seems to do. Um, but it's a very big beast, so we'll have to see how well we do. We have a good quantity of countermeasures all on the back so we can pull up move away from any offensive uh, measures quite easily. Uh, I'm planning to use the terrain for cover I mean that's the way helicopters usually work um, you'll often see military helicopters with a bubble sticking out the top above the rotors so what that is is a radar um, so it sticks out over the main rotor assembly so that they can sit behind a hill detecting something and that paints a target for them to either fire missiles that will go up over the hill and come down the other side or they will just paint it for a plane or something flying past so minimize risk of counter attack now Lowbury here uh, named for his load-bearing characteristics. I mean, we have a uh, carrier here. 
I'll just set the speed up on that, I think. Um, is a amateur helicopter pilot. Now, we have been a little slow in our helicopter technology. This is our first one. I mean, in typical A Industries fashion, we uh, have one that I believe is superior to everyone else's. But I mean, that's arguable, isn't it? Just um, turn the time warp up, see how it behaves. So we seem to be nice and level. A little bit more. Descending slightly. Leveling out. Oh, that's pretty good. So we can. We, it looks like we can run at um, four times time acceleration without too much difficulty. Um, as we get higher up, we should travel a little faster just due to the thinner air, but we'll also lose some thrust due to the thinner air. Um, that's a big disadvantage of helicopters is that as you exceed, we're, we're cruising along about 10,000 feet, which is good. Good height. Um, 30,000 feet, where planes like to go. We, we're losing a lot of our thrust due to the um, rotors being the primary source of thrust. We're not um, really jetting that much. And it looks like the uh, game itself is very confused about the trajectory we're following, which is nice, I suppose. So the breaded galash. Not too far. So the... Um, although it struggles a bit in uh, regular time, with all this stuff around, it looks like we're okay in time accelerate, which is a bit odd. Usually um, you'll get that yellow flicker to indicate that the game is pausing for a second to correct something, finish some calculation that it can't do quite in real time. But it's averaging mode. Seems fine. So, uh, given that we're you know, 120 meters a second, the other one was a good 1200 meters a second. It took a, you know, three minutes, so this probably takes 30 minutes, which looks to me like we left a bit sandy there. Where's the bit sandy defenses? Something bugged out? We might have to examine that. We'll have a look at that later, but for now, we're worried about the breaded galash. <laughs> now, um, one thing that I have to note here is that Twitchy likes to sit behind the hill over here and fire missiles at us, so we're going to give him a taste of his own medicine. Now, this, this light... has been a mistake. So the plan is, with this ground launch, we hit the braided galash if we can. If we can't, we'll have to launch a second one. The tetsy flies, oh god, they're the things of nightmares. I, I don't know if you guys, probably not, hopefully not, hopefully you have no idea what a tetsy fly is. So. If you're aware a little bit about uh, human migratory history, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago, um, the tsetse fly is probably the reason so many people left Africa in the early hominids. Um, oops. Okay, so it doesn't handle control very well when you uh, touch something and you're in time accelerate, but at least we didn't... What the hell was that? We had a little spark there. Um, sorry, I just got to pay attention for a second. Okay, so the Tetsi fly. Now, they 
are a burrowing lava, so they have a tendency to burrow into skin and things. Uniquely, they work by uh, leaving the little eggs, which are small, they're sort of a human hair type thing, little balls, um, small enough to burrow into your paw before they're even uh, hatched, so you can't feel it, it doesn't actually burrow in, it just rubs in. Um, and what they would traditionally do, I imagine, during their early evolutionary history, is um, lay those on trees and bushes, and then animals would come and rub up against them, and they would end up burrowed in the, uh, yeah, brushed into the animal's hair and skin. Uh, at which point, the egg feels the warmth and hatches and burrows deep, uh, and then it eats under the skin, which is quite uncomfortable, and then when it's ready, it burrows its way out and flies off. And that's a tsetse fly. Fuck those things. Um, the reason I'm such a disliker of them is that not just animals have this problem. Humans, especially in Africa where it's nice and warm and dry in a lot of places, um, will put clothes out on lines. So you will find that these horrible things, horrible, horrible things, will mistake the clothes for leaves, plant them in there, and then you put on some underwear which is full of the little things, and not fun. It's never happened to me, but it's something that I do not want to ever happen to me. So between the spiders and the snakes and the scorpions and the horrible, horrible flies, the malaria, I can see why people wanted to move out. I, I don't blame them. Alright, so we are Team B. Guard is all off, yes. Let's just um, pick up the speed a little. I can't believe I made the mistake of flying at night time again. See, the problem is, we're on the opposite side to the KFC here, me and Tape, for most of our activities. So, when it seems like it's daytime, you go to launch, and it makes sense. You get all set up, you get the recording started, you're all excited to go, you get off, you start talking. Yep. Only you notice it's night time a bit of the way in and these missions you're supposed to do once, so I gotta run it. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, so like I said, I did some basic things, basic testing to make sure that I could um, target it successfully. Um, it works pretty well. This is the first one that works well with um, ripple mode on the rocket pods and um, armed targets so that I could... Um, Uh, quickly hit a whole bunch of targets at once. Surprisingly good at that. I think because it's so slow um, and maneuvers well, it, that works well. Um, you might notice a lot of little spray on the wings. I'm using um, jet, little air jets, um, which they're not very powerful, but anyway, it's better than nothing and it helps with this thing. Especially on the roll axis where there's very little control. Um, the rest is mainly the um, blades, really. Alright, so we know that there is a land bridge over there. Still plenty far away.
Oh, see? So there's some angles where you've just got very limited control because of the nature of the helicopter. You just keep those discs loaded. Okay, lights. That looks like this ended up handling itself. We seem to have balanced out nicely enough. Now we need to get lower. a bit of a slip there to wash off some speed. We'll just continue to descend on a bit of a funny angle. We're loading the uh, shredded panache. You see the uh, game time has suddenly slowed down a whole heap. All right. Well, let's uh, launch a couple of those and see how that handles, shall we? Now this is a very dangerous flight condition for real helicopters where you're going slow and hovering in the air and descending slightly. Um, you get this thing called vortex ring state occurring. And we fired four. That looks like it might have... No, maybe not. Still seems to be intact. Couple of Mavericks. We are climbing too much. Let's just uh, sink a bit. That's interesting. Maybe I should have followed it in. Alright, well if I don't get a direct hit this time, I think I'm going to have to go around. Take a look, see what's going on. It still seems to be firing pretty well. See, I was worried I'd brought too much ordnance. I'm glad. 
I did now. See what do we have left? We've got four hellfires, uh, four sidewinders, and one hellfire. That's not good. All right. It's underground, isn't it? the ground it's not underground it's just got some kind of weird resistance looks like I just got winged I wonder how it survived so well. Can't see crap. Okay, what we need to do is we really need to get another angle on it. Die, Ganache. All right. I don't know why that uh, was such a bastard to hit. 
sucked up all of my missiles. So this thing is basically a sitting duck. You might notice the auto flags patented, patent pending uh, by A Industries. When my gear comes down, my little flags come out. Um, they're both pretty hot because of that uh, hit. So I took a couple of hits. Some stuff blew up, but apparently nothing too critical. Um, what am I missing? Ammo's all still there. I don't know, I saw some stuff blow up. Oh well, I suppose it doesn't matter. So, we will plant a flag here. And then we will go and pick up. Whoops. Now I've had some troubles with this thing with um uh the EVA where when you get out it destroyed the world once, so that was pretty bad. As bad things go, that was well up there. Um, not sure what to do. We don't make a great anti-air without that. We do have a bunch... Hmm. Just thinking, there's a uh, nice gun sitting right there. I'm going to go pick up Commander Shepard. Uh, such a shame. It's such a nice bit of hardware, that thing. Pulsars. Surprisingly resilient. I don't know how it was. It was it must have just done a ten, tremendous job at evading those missiles. Perhaps it's covered in um, countermeasures. Which is why my uh, more direct assault worked so well. All right, Lowberry. Nope, oh, that way around. So AI Ben Bay. Oops, Ben 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 Bay. How's this for inflexible? Strategy. Actually, it's probably pretty bad, to be honest. Now, I have done some changes. Actually, now I'm thinking, I'm a little nervous about this. I hope I can still climb in. There have been some changes since I uh, last climbed in. This is one of the problems with testing your vehicle a lot. Anyway, it lives up to its name of Tetsi Fly for sure. It's a horrible, horrible thing. Alright, so uh, maybe I'll jump here. Oops. There we go. No problems. Eh. No, 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 no. Oh god, oh god. Don't you ragdoll on me, buddy. <sighs> of all the times to just get a lag spike, eh?
Why can't I board it? There we go. Maybe I need to install a ladder on this thing. Okay, well, I'm going to quick save here in case of crashes. I am going to turn off my rocket pod. And I am going to set a course for the mosquito. Alright, let's fire these back up. Hmm, those should probably turn on simultaneously, but thankfully they don't bang into each other in KSV, because otherwise that would have been a horrible, horrible disaster. So up we go, flags away, gears away. Now, I don't know what you guys think about me using helicopters, I don't know. I have a lot more training with helicopters than the other guys, so it may be unfair, so if you want to ban helicopters from me, that seems like it might be fair. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, the uh, viffing in the grasshopper is pretty bad too. But uh, helicopters in particular. Although, you might like to watch them. Who knows? Maybe it can be a specialty of mine. I just wish I could see better. Alright, so let's put the gear down just in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Oops. Damn it. Leg spike right when I pressed that button. <sighs> okay, this is a, a towering approach, which is a worst case approach. I don't know what I pressed there, but judging by the way that flew like crazy, I think I must have put the thrust all the way up. <sighs> How embarrassing. Alright, so high altitude cruise, high altitude cruise. High altitude cruise. Let's 
suddenly got really slow, which is a worry. High altitude cruise. So we've got four low altitude crews, four high altitude crews. We have wretched porcupine probes. So, I suppose they're what we're going to target. targeted there. Come on, target it. What the hell, game? There we go. Click, 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 there we go. Here we are. First four neatly on their way. Wait, is that the second four neatly on their way? I don't know, it's not important. The important thing is lots and lots of missiles. Ah, oh, that's right, four low ones, four high ones. it from the ground. That's weird. Alright, well, let's see how this goes. Looks like none of those hit. One of those hit. So that's in a convenient place behind that building. I'll have to bear that in mind. Nice job, little dude. Although I have to admit, with a loadout like that, you're lucky my helicopter is not working. All right. Seriously, you kind of thought that's what I meant. What's that? Ah, oh, bits that are falling through the floor. Wait, that's disappeared. Alright. Correctly, they are not. 
know that thing to change for the version 6. Without being able to target these wheels, I have a bit of a problem here. But you know what? That's the fun of having to play your turn as it lands, right? turret should grab it off me if everything's working yes it did excellent uh, quick save again and move on to the main part of our mission <laughs> 